In this video, I'm going to show you how I cleaned up my foggy and hazy windows without replacing or removing the glass units. Many window companies will tell you that it can't be done. As a homeowner, it may very well make sense to do this if you're handy and have a little bit of time. This is especially true if you have large insulated glass units. But before we start fixing, let's understand how windows become foggy and hazy in the first place. When windows are new, the insulated glass units are airtight. With temperature cycling over the years, the seals weaken, allowing a tiny bit of air to get pushed in and out by pressure. This breathing action will push humid air in and then push only some of it out. Over time, moisture will accumulate inside, overwhelming the desiccant and leading to fogging. If this goes on long enough, this water will deposit minerals and dirt onto the inside surfaces of the glass, leaving swirls. But the story doesn't end there. Eventually, the microscopic fissures in the seal will widen, allowing air to go in and out more freely. This may actually dry the inside of the window, but the deposits will remain. This is how you get a hazy, partially opaque window. Now, you may think that with a failed window unit seals, your R value is zero, but this is not true. There is very little air exchange happening, and the thermal efficiency is barely affected. Even argon gas only adds half an R point, so if you lost it, no big deal. This is why it makes sense to repair the existing window units. Obviously, defogging and dehazing a window involves cleaning the inside surfaces. Therefore, there are only two problems we need to solve. How to get inside, and what to use once we're in. How we get inside will depend on your window. You can either make a hole in the outside glass pane, or the seal between the panes. If you have tempered glass, you cannot drill through it, so you must go through the seal. If you have soft seals, you may be able to poke through them with a bent piece of wire without removing the glass unit. You may need to melt your way through any plastic layers. If you have metal seals, you'll need to at least partially remove the glass unit so you can drill from the side or bottom. My windows are tempered, but they have soft seals, so I'm poking through. Now let's look at the tools and supplies we're going to need. So here is how I made the tools for washing the inside of the window. Uh, what I have here is a regular pump sprayer for chemicals. Uh, right now it's completely unmodified. And I have a bunch of vinyl hoses. In fact, I have three different sizes, which I'll show you in a second. And I have a bunch of these um, industrial blunt needles. Blunt tip needles. They actually are intended to go in syringes. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to convert this to a sprayer that can spray something through a very fine needle that's going to um, allow me to spray this in without making a huge hole in either the glass or the seal. And this is relatively simple to do. So I remove the tip, the spray tip, which gives me a, a wide opening. And then what I did was I took this hose, which uh, if you can see, is a uh, 3 8 outer quarter inner. And with a gentle application of heat from a heat gun, or maybe a flame or a blow dryer would work too, I was able to stretch it out uh, so that it just, just fits and I can actually thread it on. And if it leaks, you can put a zip tie around it. Next I have um, this piece of hose, it's, uh, it's about six millimeters, which I think is a quarter outer. I don't know what the inner size is. And it just fits in. Actually, it goes all the way back there. And then I put a zip tie around this. Or if you have really tiny hose clamps, that would work too. And finally, I have this really tiny um, fuel line, which is... Uh, 3 sixteenths outer, 3 30 seconds inner. And it just perfectly fits inside here. And once again, I could put a little zip tie around it. It doesn't need to be, uh, it doesn't need to last long. Ideally, it wouldn't leak because you don't want concentrated vinegar all over you. But if it drips a little bit, it's not the end of the world. So, for the first window that I did, I, I didn't actually have a needle. And so what I did was, I, I hit the tip of this uh, fuel line with a heat gun and then while it was hot I squeezed it with a zip tie and that got me a, a kind of a fine spray jet on the tip and so I was able to just insert it through a hole I made in the window and kind of wiggle it around 
but it didn't give me very good control. It was actually very hard to aim. So because of that, for my next window, I ordered these needles. And you'll notice that I have them bent in different shapes. This proved not to be very useful for this particular window. And this one, um, I only use for poking a hole through the soft seal. And then later on, I, I don't know if this will focus, later on I bent uh, the tip into a hook so that I could um, pull on the edges of the soft seal and pull it back down so that it's not shaped like a volcano inside of the window. So it actually um, is more like a little sink allowing the fluids to drain. You'll see that in process later. And so the only part left is how do I get this to mate um, to mate with the syringe opening on the needle, a needle, any one of them. And you see that I already did this here. And the way I did it is it's slightly too large to fit inside. And so I filed it with some sandpaper until it was small enough so I could kind of squeeze it in. And then I used a heat gun so that it makes a pretty good seal. Now it still would pop off and so because of that I put a little bit of heat shrink tubing around it so that it's more manageable and it's not popping off while I'm while I'm using it. So in the end this is what my washing assembly looks like. It's three sets of hose and a bent needle. Now the way I bent the needle I slipped this fuel line over it which allowed me to bend it without uh, without creasing or folding the folding the needle tube. And then what that got me is um, kind of a, a wide opening. You can see in the in the ones I haven't I haven't messed with, the uh, the opening's quite large. And that with um, with the pressure that this pump sprayer is able to produce, it doesn't generate um, a, a strong enough spray to reach uh, the length of the window, the height of the window. And so what I did was I took a pair of pliers and I squeezed the tip, not completely, but I squeezed the tip enough so that it um, it concentrates the flow and and creates creates a, a very fast jet. In my case, I needed to go six feet straight up, and it needs to be a relatively a relatively concentrated stream. And so for me that. Uh, turned out to be a, basically an oval shape. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but it's an it's an oval shape, and the exact bend that you're going to need is going to depend on how you're getting into the window. So you can vary that. Finally, the chemicals we have. I was lucky enough to find highly concentrated vinegar at my local big box store. I think it was a, a return or something on a special order. They, they usually don't stock it, but you can always ask them to get it. And I ordered a, a big container of uh, pure alcohol because the big box stores only had tiny tiny containers like this and and I was afraid that I was going to go through a dozen of these things and it will be way too much packaging and probably expensive too. So that's about it um, on the tools and so when I use them I used, I diluted this to about 1 to 3 to down to about a 10% vinegar, probably a regular household cleaning vinegar which is about 5% would also work, I haven't tried it. I was a little afraid of using super high strength and I needed a lot of volume anyway. And then after that, after I uh, ran out of vinegar, I would, I would pour in the alcohol, and I didn't use as much alcohol. I probably only used about this much for one window, which is well, probably less than a quart. This is a gallon container, by the way. Um, finally, for the last step, because I am impatient, I didn't feel like waiting for the alcohol that I sprayed in there to rinse and dry out the inside of the window to evaporate naturally. And since I have an air compressor, I was able to do a very similar thing, as you can see, to be able to blow air inside, which would replace the air very quickly and effectively dry out the alcohol mist. Uh, as a result, I didn't have to wait for days or, or probably 
more likely weeks for the window to clear up before I can close it all up. Instead, I'm able to do pretty much the same thing and adapt it to an air compressor. This is a standard blower with a, I don't even know what these things are, but this is like a thread in metal piece that once again I was able to stretch the vinyl over. And I think that's it for tooling. The first step is to coat the surfaces of the panes with the 10% vinegar solution. This will hopefully dissolve any mineral deposits left there over the years. The goal is to coat the entire surface of both panes. For this, I need my spray to come out in a tight stream so that I can aim it precisely and so that it can reach all the way to the top of this rather tall window. I had to play with the shape of the needle tip quite a bit to get this right. Remember to wear eye and hand protection. Disposable gloves do not hold up well enough. Use thick rubber gloves. Now may be a good time to make sure that the liquid can drain out. If you poke through like I did, you have a little volcano in there, and the liquid is pooling on the bottom. To fix this, I bent a needle into a hook shape so that I can grab the edges of the volcano and pull on them, bending the seal into a funnel instead. By the way, if you are drilling through the glass and your hole is not at the very bottom, you may need to suck the liquid out manually using a siphon type tool or a mighty vac. Now, once the vinegar drains out, the next step is to rinse the vinegar out with alcohol. This is just like the vinegar application. Spray enough to reach all glass surfaces. And now you wait. While you wait, you may want to use some water to rinse all the tools in case they have vinegar on them, and walls and any surfaces that could be damaged by acid. Now you simply wait for the alcohol to evaporate through the tiny holes. The alcohol will at first sit on the glass like a bunch of water, and then eventually, as it dries up, it's going to turn into a mist that's going to sit there for many days. If you are impatient, like me, you can use a compressor. This is my full assembly. Um, I have this blower hooked up to my compressor, and I'm stepping down to the needle so I can blow air. It's, as you can see, it's it's not very loud, it's not very high pressure, you can, and I'll zoom in to show you that I am I'm actually using a, a regulator on a dryer over here. The dryer is not strictly speaking necessary, I blew it without the dryer and it had pretty much the same effect, but I already bought it so I might as well use it. And you can see I have it set to very low pressure, probably something like 8 or 10 psi. And especially through this needle I think it's going to um, let me run this for 15-20 minutes on a tank full without plugging in the compressor. And I'm done. I'm not going to completely seal up the holes I made because I want moisture to be able to escape. Instead, I'll loosely cover the holes with some pieces of plastic. Good luck with your windows, and if you try this, leave a comment.